Chopin's third etude is challenging for everybody, but it's particularly tricky for those of us with small hands, because even though the main game of the etude is in the right hand, with all of those thirds going up and down, the left hand actually has to reach very big expanses, and for those of us with small hands, that can be tricky. That to get the left hand to reach all of the notes it needs to. We actually need to allow the hand to close into a position I call the one-year llama. The one-eared llama is a hand position that might seem sort of strange, but can actually be really, really useful and helpful. So if you imagine that your hand and your arm are a llama, here's two-eared llama, hello, with this being the body, and this being the neck, and this being the head, ears, nose, mouth, the distance between the ear and the nose is actually really far, and if you let your hand close, it can help you find the shape that you need. So just to really show you the difference between what's possible with a flat hand stretching and what's possible with a one-eared llama, this is about as far as I can stretch my fourth finger and fifth finger apart. And it doesn't feel great. And it's not that far. So if I take this distance, and then I turn my other hand into a one-eared llama, look at how much farther I can reach between five and four. And of course it's true in both hands. So the one-eared llama reminds us that we are three-dimensional creatures and that we're going to sometimes need strange hand positions that are not just your typical one, two, three, four, five position, but that you can find the comfortable position that will let you get to where you need to go. So in the left hand, we go down here and I'm letting my hand close to the possibility of llama. instead of stretching everything out. Now the possibility of llama can also include something like this. But the point is that we're not going to be playing this piece with our hands flat, but turning and flexible. When you're looking at these quarter notes, in the downbeats of this left hand figure and measures three and four and all over the place. I actually think that you should ignore the quarter note and let the, the pedal handle it, especially when you have to get there from a lower note. So maybe you could hold the quarter down here and then move it up. That's fine. And maybe here. But there's no way to do this one. Well, I guess you could but you definitely can't do it in measure eight when you're coming from the low octave. Now, if it were actually at this tempo that I'm showing you, you could do something really fussy like do five, one, and then go to five, but there's no time. So if you're just playing as we are, let that pinky go and think of the quarter note as being an emphasis rather than having to show you length. In measure five, and there's a bunch of other places where this works too, you want to let your fingers do the what I call the black note, white note slide. So you're gonna take one finger and slide it from a black note to the white note. And I like to do that really through this whole piece anytime you're at the top of a part of the black keys. So if you're at the top of the two, Top of the three, slide. In measure 27, I recommend leaving out the G if you can't reach that ninth at the end of the measure in the left hand. So instead of, and then trying to reach or roll, just leave it out. And then in measure 29, you can leave out the low F. The right hand in measures 27 to 30, it's really helpful if you practice them in four note chords, like. And of course, those ones are easy because they're all white keys. It gets trickier when the geography changes with the black keys. And part of the way you want to do that is when you're practicing each chord, you play the chord and then go as quickly as you can to the next one. 
and then don't play the chord until you're ready to go to the next one. So I'm going to play, and then go. Play, and then go. Play, and then go. At measure 31, with this cascade, these four note chords are really helpful. And you want to feel a symmetrical rotation. It's, it actually can feel really nice if both hands are doing the same thing. And it's a good idea to practice these ones. Out in, out in. And also in out. In measure 43, you might want to do the left hand 5-1, and then jump up 5-2-1, and then jump up again 5-3-2-1, or even 5-2-1-2. But if you can, if you can rotate and let your hand open, it's really nice to do five, five, two, one, and then you could even maybe slide, and then five, three, two, one. Or you can have the left hand do five, five, two, one, two, and that can be nice too. So enjoy Opus 25, number six, and let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.